All right, uh, Alan with Splice Media Group, and I'm here with Pearl. Uh, she opened the show today at 11:30. Um, what an honor to be able to open a festival like Bourbon and Beyond. You know, be the first act. I, I think there's a lot in that. You know, being that first act to set the tempo for everybody else. How how did you feel when you were selected to uh, uh, play this event? Uh, totally honored. Um, it I think I said it on stage. I, I think I did. I don't know what, what happened, but <laughs> you know, when you go on stage, you come off, you're like, I, I saw everything, what happened? Um, but I, I said it on stage. I said it, it's a such an honor to be invited to play your music in front of an audience, and especially at an event like Bourbon and Beyond. It's it's really a big deal, and, and for an artist like me, it, it's totally an honor, totally an honor. Right. Uh, we caught your show last night as well yeah. as today. Uh, they were both excellent, uh, but they had a little bit different feel. I mean, obviously last night's was a more intimate, especially on some of the first half of your set. Um, how, how, did, how do you feel like playing an intimate show versus a large show? And, you know, you have a favorite? Well, I think I think the difference between last night and tonight uh, and to this morning were we had an hour last night and we had 30 minutes this morning, right? And uh, this morning we were opening the main stage, 11.30, first band on the main stage. So we were like, we got to just kick it out. We got to do, we got to choose the songs and we got to do them Ramon's style. Just bam, 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 song, song, song. And the only time I'm going to speak is if somebody has to maybe do a tuning real quick or, uh, or right before the second to last song. That's when I'll talk. But other than that, we're just gonna we're gonna pick. We're not gonna go real slow. We're not gonna bring it way down. We're gonna go. Good morning, everybody. This is the main stage. Bam! Here we go. We're out. And I feel like maybe that's what we did. We tried to do that. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that, hearing that it that it worked. So that's that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it felt like. You know, and and like you said, you know, you, you don't have time to waste. You've got a half hour to prove to a lot of people that may may have not heard you before uh, what what you have to offer them exactly. um, you know your the cover the rod stewart cover at the end of the set you did it last night as well super hot i mean do you, are you have a uh idea of maybe taking and releasing that you know that's a good idea uh, I, you know, we love playing that song and i think everybody everybody lives hearing that song the faces stay with me come on you can't lose with that song but yeah that's a good idea maybe we'll cover that it is, and you—you you actually, your version is like right up there with the original, I think, and you know, that's one of the things it takes to be able to, you know, cover cover a song like that and actually have the the uh, your fans or, or new fans accept it, you know. So, um, you you have a couple of your songs I would I want to talk about. All I got and Mama, you know, the two of your originals off the off the newest album, uh, very personal lyrics. Um, do, do you feel like that's in your songwriting that's something that helps you like to get that out or talk about other people's experiences like that yeah I mean that's where I go first and foremost I mean that's you write about it's a cliche but you write about what you know and that's what I don't know I, I I like to, I feel very safe when I have a space to perform um, on stage is the safest place for me to emote, to share how I'm really feeling in my guts. It's not always easy one-on-one -on -one private time with other humans in your life to, to say how you feel or tell people your biggest fears or uh, your biggest loves and things like that. Um, but when it's through music and it's through song and you're on stage and and that's it's a place where you're supposed to be doing that and everybody expects for you to do that um, it feels very safe to me it's very cathartic to me um, Probably because you have the persona you, you know, once you kind of put that persona on you're like I can talk about anything. Yeah, because I, anything goes, right? It's rock and roll. I'm on stage. People are expecting to be entertained. So I could, I could cry. I could 
fall on the floor. I could, but that's what you know. That's that's what we're here for. Right. It is meant, meant for the emotion. Um, and I, I noticed family's a big part of you. Like last night, and I've seen videos of you out there. You know, having your husband and your son there, just right side stage while you're performing in downtown Louisville. I thought that was very special. And, uh, you know, does obviously that means a lot to you, uh, family. But can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, my husband is my, I always say my husband saved my life. My husband is my hero. He's my cheerleader, he's my champion. And he's also been doing this his entire life. Um, I've, I've been in, the, in, in and around the music business my entire life. My dad's a performer. I grew up on tour buses, at festivals, at gigs, backstage, dressing rooms, side of the stage, on stage. Um, and so has my husband. And, uh, you know, we were both married previously. We came together and it just, he knows what it's like. And he will not ever let me down. And he won't let me let myself down. You know, I think that's the most important thing is when you step on the stage, you have to believe in yourself. But it really makes a world of difference if you have somebody standing next to you who is your pillar of strength. So you can go, I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't deserve to be here. I can't do it. I'm, I'm nothing. Nobody cares. And then you turn to him and he goes, get the fuck up. Stand up on your feet. I know you better than this. You know, you, it's to have someone to remind you of who you are and, and where you need to be and where you should be and what you deserve because it's so hard to tell yourself that sometimes. For me, that's true. And and Scott is the, he's the first person in my life who has been that person for me. So. Yeah, it means everything to be able to look over and see him standing on the side and out in the audience running around with the camera. He's recording everything and my son is over on the side and I came off stage last night and and, and my, my son high-fived me and he goes, look mom, I made a trailer about you. And he we went to the dressing room and we sat down and he sat on my lap and he showed me, you know, like iMovie or something. Right. You can edit together and he edited together the princess story of the movie trailer and it was all clips of me on stage and sound checking and the princess lived her dreams and you know and he was like how cool is that and I go it's the coolest thing it's the, literally the coolest thing ever right. and, and, and then you almost get a, the, the view of, of kind of how he views you you know some of it, through through his eyes doing yes. something like that yes and that's another thing is that when it goes back to having a champion beside you is also it's that saying of well I was gonna give up but then I realized who was watching me I have a son now. I can't quit anything because I don't want him to ever be a quitter, you know? And it takes a lot of, it takes a lot in the music business too and I, and I think in, 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 in probably any business that you're in. But when you're in a business where you are opening your heart up in front of people and they're standing there judging you and you got to win them over in 10, five seconds, you know, it's a big deal. And, 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 and when your son is on the side and he's watching you, you can't walk off this you can't walk off the stage and go, I suck, I blah 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 blah. You have to you know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> right. You know? Even though I don't think you have to them, do that. Right. Fake it for them. Yeah. Right. Um, you know when when you started off you were primarily rock and roll. And now you've went into the, the California country with your new album. Um, one of the things that I noticed, and we won't talk about the transition, but one of the things I noticed that's heavily influenced in both of them is the blues. Um, you know, it, you, can we talk just a little bit about like some of your your root influences, like your your real basic root influences that you've had? I grew up listening to R and B. My mom always had uh, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding. Stevie Wonder, I mean, it was all Motown, it was all Ray Charles, you know, it's just, when I, when I was, when I was born, she would put those big, I was born in the 70s, she would put those big 70s squishy headphones on my, on my little head and put me in a hammock and play Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder and rock me in a hammock, you know, so this is, 
this is the soundtrack of my life, you know? Um, it's what I know. It's, it's part of my fiber. Right, it's almost in your DNA when you grow up and it's just played over and over and over and it just permeates you. So is, I mean, but that, I think, I, I'm thinking that you are a music person also and, and, and everybody here is, otherwise why, you know, here. why, yeah, right. exactly. Absolutely. But it, 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 it really shapes you. It means everything. It influences everything that you do, I think, you know. So I grew up with R&B, but I also grew up with a little country and I grew up with rock and roll. You know, so this is when I turn my guts inside out. That's what you're always going to see and hear. Um, kind of all, all, on that path, I guess a little bit, but maybe off of it a little bit. If, if you could collaborate with one of the artists that is playing at this festival, either one of the days, do you have one you would choose? Isn't that Joan Jett right there on that screen? <laughs> that is Joan Jett on that screen. She's on the stage, and we're going to head out there pretty quick. Oh, man. You know, we just saw, she just played at the Hollywood Bowl. I live in L.A., and we saw her open for Heart. With Heart, yeah. It would probably, man, I, I love Joan, of course. She's just a given, and the, the Wilson sisters. And I have to, I have to say that Bonnie Raitt is, is kind of just like a soft spot for me. I... I I got. I had the chance to meet her once. We went to her show in Honolulu, Hawaii, and we got the chance to meet her after. And I, I was speechless. I have. No, I'm not necessarily a very outgoing, loud human, okay. but I'm not really ever a lo at a loss for words. I, I couldn't find. I had no vocabulary. And the picture I took with her it was just kind of like, <laughs> like I, yeah. I'm like a deer in the headlights, you know? Funny, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll wrap this up pretty quick. But uh, do you have anything in the works right now? I mean, I know your album's only been out for a year or so, but. Um, well, I just uh, starting to write a new record, actually. Okay. Um, but I, I've actually, I've just, I've been writing with Cody Jinx. He's a country artist. Uh, I toured a lot with Cody last year. Cody's, he's has my heart. He and his wife Rebecca and their children. Um, Again, the family, which keeps everything strong, which I it's think is a great exactly thing. Exactly. Yeah. All about family. Um, we just went Labor Day weekend. We stayed at their at their place out in Texas, and Cody and I wrote a really great song. So that's, uh, I think you'll be hearing that pretty soon. I also just recently wrote with Ward Davis. You know, Ward, know. Ward is yep. wonderful. I love Ward so much. He He's just wonderful. Um, and I think, you know, those two songs are, you're going to be hearing those very soon. And that that's sort of something that I'm moving into is, is collaborating with other artists, writing with them and having them perform the songs. And also I'll be writing a new album. Uh, when we go back to L.A., we're going to be performing at the Grammy Museum uh, at a, an event that is honoring Janis Joplin, which is really cool. Yeah, pretty cool. You know, just pretty that. Cool. Just, just Janice Joplin. Just, it's fine. Yeah. Just the Grammy Museum. It's no big deal. <laughs> um, and then from there, we have a, a, a tour in the works. Nothing is set in stone yet, but it, it, it would be uh, women, other women in my genre, you know, sort of co-headlining thing. Nothing to announce yet because they're still working on it. Right. But um, And then, you know. Skip, hop forward, moving, and never stop moving, never stop trying and going and doing and being. <laughs> well, excellent. Uh, yeah, we look forward to all that stuff that you, you've got coming up. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on you for sure, and uh, appreciate you stopping by. Thank you for having me. I Thanks. appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely.